Hi guys, Zach here with another Command & Conquer Red Alert video. In this game I'm playing a free for all match on the map Hamburger Hill. I'm starting in the bottom left and I'm playing Allies. On this map the bottom left is a great place to start. The reason for that is that you're not likely to get attacked early on. The person to your right is very close to the person who plays in the bottom right. So those two are probably going to fight early on. And the person located north of this position is located very close to the person in the top left. So those two are likely to fight. And that leaves you in the bottom left who is probably not going to get attacked early on. So this is a very good position to be in. One of the best tactics that works in free for all is actually trying to keep out as much trouble as possible early on. Sometimes you do need to attack because you want to expand your range of like your access to war. In the position I'm in though, I do have two ore patches which are located very close. I've got one below my base which you can see I'm mining from now. And I'm also going to be expanding my base up to the north and you can just see there, there's the other raw patch. So that's what I'm going to want to do first. I'm going to want to expand my base, build my economy and get start producing tanks. And you can see, unfortunately I've been a bit silly there, I've let a red infantryman get into my base. We've got some very good players in this free for all to match. We've got Misty Coke who's ranked in the top 200. He'd probably be ranked in the top 100 if he played a bit more quick match. We've got Brown Puddle who's ranked in the top 20. He's got two accounts, he plays Soviets and he plays Allies and both of his accounts are in the top 20. He also does Twitch streams on a Friday afternoon UK time and sometimes a Wednesday afternoon as well. So check out his stream if you're interested. We've also got Deadly Darren who's another solid player who's uh, playing as green in this match. And we've got a couple of other players who I'm not too familiar with the names. So the colours to watch out for in this match are green, red is brown puddle and orange is misty cork. And we can see we've got blue there and what I could hear is I could hear some infantry fighting going on. So I think they were under attack and um, so as I said the person on the right usually gets attacked by the person on the bottom right. And we can see I'm just setting up my economy at the moment and I'm just redirecting my ore trucks up there. I've got, we can see the orange is located directly above me, who's Misty Cork, but he's going to be fighting with it. And we can see Brown Puddle is very, very close to him. He's been expanding his base downwards. And Brown Puddle will want to fight orange because he'll want to take control of that ore patch. So at the moment we've got two fights going on. We've got a fight to the right and we've got a fight to the north. And this is quite a dramatic start to a free-for-all. And blue has already been destroyed. So the person in the bottom right has destroyed blue. So he's been finished. And it looks like it was green. It was Dead Eye Darren who had a fight with blue. And you can see that orange has also been defeated. So Brown Puddle playing red has defeated the orange player Misty Cork. And now it seems he's expanded downwards, and it seems, even though he's been in a fight, he still has a lot of medium tanks, and this is looking badly for me. Now, I've done a bit of a, a, bit of a bad mistake here, because at the start of the game, if you start in the bottom right, what I usually do is I mine the gems early on in the bottom more patch. And by mining the gems, what that allows you to do is it allows you to build two war factories early on, before you build your second or refinements. And what can you see here? I've got three ore refineries and just one war factory. So I don't really know what I was thinking at this point. You can see I've got about 6,000 ore. And 6,000 ore in the bank is no good. You need it in terms of tanks. Um, and that's why Brown Puddle at the moment outnumbers me so badly. Because I've been just mining ore, focusing on the economy, and I've not been focusing on getting war factories out which I should have been early on. So that's a, that was a bit of a stupid mistake for me. And that's what put me in that situation. But it looks because I have a stronger economy, I've been able to push him back. And when I watched the replay, what happened between Misty Cork and Brown Puddle is that Misty Cork just went for his base and managed to destroy one ore refinery. So there was a little bit of time when Brown Puddle wasn't able to build any, uh, well, wasn't able to mine as much ore, which means his economy wasn't as strong, which is what allowed me to come back there. So yeah, after that, a bit, a bit of a mistake there, but now I'm okay. So I'm building another ore refinery, just keep on building ore refineries, and keep on building buildings, it's important to do that while you're fighting. And we can see that initially, Brown Puddle was going for medium tanks, he now appears to be going for light tanks. And, oh, he's good for a mix actually, he just 
introduced a medium tank there, so he's going for a mixture of light tanks and medium tanks. Light tanks are very manoeuvrable, they do a lot of damage as well. Medium tanks do about similar damage to light tanks, but they have a lot more HP. And that's what makes medium tanks a lot better, is that they're a lot harder to destroy. So I'm going for medium tanks here, and I'm going for that building. I'm just trying to destroy that ore refinery. And what that'll do is it'll mean that his ore trucks have to travel a further distance, because they'll have to go up to the top side of his base, and it will also maybe queue up the ore trucks that are up there. So I'm just trying to do a disrupt his economy really, and the more I can disrupt his economy, the fewer tanks he will be able to produce. And I'm just placing my next ore refinery. And what you can see while we're fighting, we're both trying to micro our tanks as much as possible. Um, what you do is you can use Q move, and um, what that allows you to do is once you, you select an opponent to attack, if you hold down the Q button, the tanks will keep on attacking that target. And that's what we'll be both doing. And we'll be both doing that and focusing on moving our tanks around as much as possible. And I'm just grouping my tanks back up because I was a bit outnumbered there. And as soon as I group my tanks up, you can see that Brown Puddle is moving back. And please move to the right. I'm just going to go up to the left because I know that's where some of his ore trucks are. And you can see he's chasing me now. And I'm going to go probably for that ore refinery again. So I'm just applying this constant pressure, constantly trying to uh, disrupt his economy. And that constant pressure is going to obviously take its toll. You can see, although it does, the problem is with attacking buildings, sometimes you do lose tanks and then you can get outnumbered. So now I'm going up to the top of his base because he's keeping on building ore refineries and probably the better thing to take out first would be the construction yard. So we can see he's got his construction yard. It's looking like I'm getting some good shots in it there. And can I take it out? The question is. And yes, I can. I actually sold it before I've been able to destroy it. That's what you should do if your building's going to get destroyed. You do. You would try and sell it first, because then at least you'll salvage some ore. If your enemy destroys it, then you don't get any ore at all. Yeah, and you can see he's selling his ore refinery as well. Um, remember though, now that I've destroyed that ore refinery, he won't be able to get it back. And I'm building another war factory, because you can see I've got plenty of ore. I'm gonna build, so I've built a third war factory, which is going to increase my building speed of tanks further. And this bit is crucial now. I need to destroy this ore refinery, but what I have to be careful of is that I have enough tanks to fight at the end. Because if I lose all my tanks in this, he's going to win the counter. And we've got that, war that ore refinery down, which means now he's going to run out of ore, and he's not going to be able to build any more tanks. And I can't see any other tanks coming out of that war factory. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try and fight, but I need to not have any of it. He's going for my base. What I was going to try and do is I was going to try and fight and retreat at the same time, because the longer it takes the fight goes on, the more tanks I will build up, and um, while Brown Puddle cannot build any more. And he's going to try and do as much destruction to my base as possible. So I'm going to, it's just a race now. I'm going to have to try and destroy all his base before he does too much damage to mine. Because there's no chance he's going to destroy all my base first. We could do a lot of damage in the meantime. And we're on the last war factory, so let's see if we can destroy it. And he's managed to destroy my MCV. But we've got rid of him now, so we'll see what the damage is. And if we go down, we can see he's trying to destroy my ore refinery as well, but he's just managed to get my construction yard. So I've still got that ore refinery. Um, but what it does mean now is I'm not able to build any more buildings. So after the bad start I had, I was able to come back a bit in that fight. The problem is now, because I can't build any more buildings, I won't be able to expand up north, which is what I want to do. I want to... Because eventually I'm going to run out of ore. You can see my ore patch there is already quite bare. So that's a bit of a blow to me. So what, who have we got left now? We've got Dead Eye Darren, who's in the bottom right. He's playing green. And we've got Teal. Teal must be in the bottom, in the top right, I think. In this situation, it'd usually be the green player who is in the worst position because the green player is in between us. So we, we can see some ore trucks there. So yeah, I'll take out those ore trucks. It doesn't look like green's focused on this part of the base at the moment. He's probably too focused on teal. And we're destroying one of his construction yards. That'll be a second construction yard because we know he started from the bottom right because this is originally where blue started. And we're just doing some destruction and he seemed to pick up on where I am and you can see he's bringing his tanks to that position right now 
And he's got a mix of mediums and lights. He's also building some pillboxes. Yeah, and I need to keep on producing tanks. And we can see it's quite hard to manoeuvre our tanks. There's quite a lot here. Quite big groups. He's continuing to build pillboxes. And he's building those pillboxes very quickly. And what does that tell us? It tells us he's got multiple MCDs. Because the more construction yards you have, the more, the faster your building speed of buildings. And he's been able to build those pillboxes at a fast rate. He's also building pillboxes from the other side, which shows he has a base at the other raw patch as well. And this is going to make this part of the map very, very hard to attack. Because, of course, I've already got tanks and I won't be able to build any buildings. So, yeah, that's uh, been a bit of a hard trade for me. I have managed to whittle down this tank force quite a lot. Sure, so I should be hopefully okay if I got attacked right at the moment. So let's see, I've got some, um, I have some tanks left here and um, because I've been building while I was attacking that part of the base. So I'm going to bring them back and I'm going to have to have a look for another route in because what I want to do is I want to avoid pillboxes. Uh, well, in fact, any kind of base defence as much as possible. So there's two things I can do in this kind of position. I can either go looking around for parts of the base that aren't defended or I could focus more on our trucks. Unless, of course, he starts building on the yaw, which I think he possibly will do at this point. And we can see Teal there sending an inf lone infantry to the left side of the map. I think he's just having a scout. Um, I think Green, because you saw he was building radar jammers. So I think Green will have an information center, which means he'll have satellite. And that means he'll have view, full view of the whole map. Teal was playing Soviets, so he won't have full view of the map. He'll just have view of the part of the map's he's explored and we can see we've gone from the other side well we've tried to go from the other side but we can see there's pillboxes blocking the way and you can see i'm having a bit of trouble with tracking there i've got two tanks trying to go around the other way which isn't good because they're going to get mashed up by those pillboxes on the other side and we can see greens there get immediately brought his tanks there and i'm going to have to pull back because my units uh, aren't going to do well if they're fighting against both tanks and pillboxes at the same time. And pillboxes, you don't think they'll do much damage, but they do do quite a bit of damage to tanks. They'll make a big difference if you're fighting other tanks at the same time. So we're just grouping our tanks back together, and we'll have to think about where we want to attack next. We'll and we managed to bring his tanks outside the base. Which makes him easy to destroy. You see he's pulling back right now because he doesn't really want to fight us head on. He wants to fight us with his base defences helping him. Right, so I'm going back to this big ore patch. Yeah, you can see my ore trucks are now mining from the gems. But it is quite a long distance to travel. Man, it doesn't look like he has any ore trucks on this. Oh, he's got an ore truck there. So while we're here, we'll probably destroy those couple of ore refineries. That, that'll just make his ore trucks have to travel a bit further. And it doesn't look at this point in time that he has any pillboxes in this area. So what we'll do here is we'll... Yeah, I think we'll pull back because we don't want to go head-to-head -head with those pillboxes there. He has too many. So we're going up north and we can see that Green is here again. So it looks like Green really does have a lot of map control. Teal must be... Um, probably cornered in the very top right. Now it could work quite well if Teal was to attack now at the same time as I am, but um, it doesn't appear to be happening at the moment. Of course, I don't know what I don't know what Teal's doing at the moment. He could have an absolute huge army, and he might just be building up for when there's only one player left. And we can see, it looks like I might get this base, actually. This is going very, very well. We've got that war factory. We've got the construction yard down. And now we'll take out the pillboxes. Now, the reason I'm staying to take out the pillboxes here... And we can see that Green is actually attacking my base. So, forget the pillboxes. I'm going to go back to my base. But it's probably a good game now, as Green said. Because there's no way I can defend it. There's no way I'll get my tanks back in time. I mean, this was inevitable. I didn't have an MCV. So, I couldn't build any more buildings, which really hampered my later game. Because you can see all of your there, so it ran out. And um, some of our troops have been travelling a much further distance, which has meant I haven't been able to produce tanks as fast. I also wasn't able to produce any many pillboxes to be able to defend my base like Green was. So that basically being taken out there. 
Um, he's going down. I think I've got a couple of buildings left at the bottom. And you can see Green's going through my tanks right now to get to the bottom part of the map where my remaining two buildings are. I mean, when a player starts to stack pill, but uh, starts to stack construction yards, it becomes very hard to beat them. So that's Dead Eye Darren. Dead Eye Darren's defeated me there, and now it's going to be Dead Eye Darren first heal. And what I've done is I've went one to the replay because from my screen you wouldn't be able to see a thing um, at the end of that match. So we're looking at it from this screen and you can see Dead Eye Darren is in a very similar position. He's got lots of pillboxes defending his base. He's got a lot of light tanks and he's got a lot of helicopters as well. And you can see there, Cyan is defending his base. He's got Tesla coils, he's got heavy tanks and he's got missile launchers. So it's a very, very hard defence. What would I do in this position? Well, there's a couple of things. One of them is air attack. But he's, he has got some air defences. He is building some rocket men. The other thing is the ore trucks. If the ore trucks are travelling away from the base, you can destroy the ore trucks while they're away from the base using your tanks. And that will hamper their economy. But we can see the green is opting for the large airstrike at the moment. And let's see what he's going for. It looks like he's going to be the construction yard. And it is a construction yard, so he's going to get that down. Now what's he going to go for? He's going to go for the barracks to stop the rocket men. And now he's going for the war factory. And you can just see, as soon as he was about to destroy the war factory, that a new MCV was produced. And that was so, so close. If, he had, if that MCV had been a couple of seconds later, that war factory would have been destroyed. So Cyan was very, very, well, he was just in time there. That was very lucky. Now, had Green actually gone for the War Factory first, he could have actually won that, but um, he did, I, I think he would, given what he could see, he did do the right thing. He would usually go for the Construction Yard first, but if he'd gone for the War Factory first, now Cyan wouldn't be able to produce any more units. Now that Green has done that airstrike, the, undoubtedly Cyan is going to continue to improve his air defences so it's going to be very very hard to try and do the same thing again you can see he's already produced a barracks and he's pumping out rocket men to help defend and I, I dare say we'll see a war factory coming out soon as well and we can see Greens has got some tanks there is he going to go for the ore truck? No and I don't know where he's going with those tanks at the moment because yeah if he goes there he's going to get destroyed very very quickly and you can see he's taking his helicopters and he's trying to destroy the Tesla coils. Now I don't know if those tanks were a bit of a diversion. And he's managed to destroy all but one of the Tesla coils and he's taking his tanks in. So he's used his, his air force in order to destroy the base defences and now he's bringing his tanks in. And you can see that Cyan's sitting there with the other sides just leaving his tanks there while it looks like green. Dead Eye Darren is going to get in this position. So now he's got to move with most of the heavy tanks. The missile launchers, although they do a lot of damage, they're very, very weak in terms of hit, hit, hit points. So he's been able to destroy them very, very quickly. And you can see some movement at the top of Cyan's base right now. And this is quite crucial because guess what Cyan's going to go for now? He's going to go for the barracks. He's going to go for the construction yard. And then he's going to go for the power plants because the power plants, if he can get the position of those, that's going to turn off the power and the Tesla coils won't be able to fire anymore. So we can see right now he's going to the construction yard and the construction yard is down. Cyan will not be able to build another one. I think he's destroyed the ore refinery there, but there's still another ore refinery up north. So we just need to get those power plants down. And we can see now the Tesla coils have switched off and he's just going to continue destroying the power plants. What Cyan needs to do at the moment is delete some of those Tesla coils and give the others power, but he's seem to be doing that. And the green is just tearing through his base. So at this point, it's going to be probably all over. The question is, can he destroy the base with this force? Or is he going to have to wait and get a second green force to work and destroy the base? Because Cyan isn't going to be able to make a counter with the number of units he's got left, even if he is able to win this fight. And we can see, I think green's now going for the Tesla coils. And he is going for the Tesla coil. Well, he's going for the service depot as well. And the ore refinery. And he's just trying to destroy all the remaining buildings. As soon as all because it is destroyed structure. So as soon as all the buildings are destroyed, it will be good game. And as we can see 
it's a bit inevitable at this point. Um, he's trying to fight a bit with the tanks right now. And they're pulling back to the Tesla coils. He's probably got a few too many, I don't know, maybe a few too many missile launchers in this position. Um, and you can see though some of those tanks, some of those missile launchers are on very, very low HP. And you can see he's assaulting the Tesla coils again. And he's only got two left. Tesla coils do have low HP. And the last one is going down. And that's the end of the game. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching.